Yeah, in this lecture, we will be talking about uh, the uh, some more techniques on the use the ground improvement tech, uh, the ground improvement. Uh, essentially, we will be addressing uh, vibro compaction methods. In this, uh, as I just mentioned earlier, uh, when the soil is very poor and you need to construct uh, some sort of infrastructure on this uh, particular uh, soils, whether it is uh, uh, sandy soils, loose sands or uh, clay soils. We need to use some of these methods instead of going for pile foundations uh, which are quite expensive and also like energy intensive. So, in this methods what we see is that uh, we have we just do the compaction at selected locations using vibrations like we, in, in, uh, we induce some sort of energy and uh, this uh, we use some uh, equipment uh, which results in compaction to large depths. As I just mentioned. Uh, say for example, if uh, 10 meters is the depth of the soil to be compacted, uh, like, like as I said the SPT value should be about 20 or 25, uh, we need to really have other than uh, what I just mentioned in the previous lectures like uh, dynamic compaction, many other methods which are quite uh, scientific like you know there are many advantages here. Um, so, the this particular techniques like vibro compaction methods are quite useful. Here the principle as I just mentioned is that it uses the vibratory energy and then uh, uh, a small single float is there and then it, when you introduce that particular uh, float into the soil it just vibrates and then the, uh, there is a densification that occurs because of the particle rearrangement and uh, the uh, zone of compaction around a single float is a function of the type of float. In fact, uh, there are different types of floats like their specifications. And the success of the in situ densification depends on the grain size characteristics of the in situ soils as well as that of backfill soil. What I meant by this is that like grain size distribution of soils plays a significant role. Uh, so, for example, if you have gravel and sandy material like you can see these uh, materials here this is A and B types. Uh, here we just do what is called vibro compaction in the sense at a selected point uh, we just densify that and then you finally you know uh, from bottom you construct a column of densified material like uh, dense sand instead of a pile foundation say for example. So, this is one uh, uh, important thing here, but in the case of clays like you know you have clays and sills uh, what we do is that since uh, it is very difficult to uh, uh, get good uh, you know densities and uh, good uh, friction properties we introduce some column of materials here which are again we call it stone columns or sand columns and all that. So, we use this material and then we slowly withdraw the uh, top the arrangement from the top. So, that way a column is formed and uh, this is called vibro compaction methods this is called vibro replacement methods. So, both uh, techniques make use of this uh, vibration energy and uh, the as I just mentioned the soils in the zones A and B which I said they are all more towards uh, gravelly and the sandy materials they can be compacted by deep vibratory compaction equipment and this is called vibration vibro compaction and while the soils of the zones C and D cannot be compacted by vibration alone like vibration you know for example, in the clays of clays you cannot do that. So, soils in the zone C are often found on sites where liquefaction due to earthquakes is of concern. In fact, uh, when a, the earthquake comes particularly in uh, sandy materials like loose sands and sails the possibility that uh, liquefaction occurs the momentary loss of shear strength of soils then whatever collapse occurs is of uh, very you know significant magnitude. So, we do not want to have this sort of uh, issues also. So, this we do would like to avoid this liquefaction as well. And this can be possible by you know use of stone columns. The soils in the zone D say for example, they are all uh, pure uh, clays they cannot be compacted by uh, vibration, but they can be reinforced in the sense you are putting sand or uh, sand uh, the stone material which has a higher strength. So, we say that you are uh, reinforcing the ground you are stiffening the ground and you can even drain the ground because stone columns act as a drainage material as well. So, this is uh, what uh, we are going to see today. Uh, uh, there are some variations in the vibration uh, techniques uh, for example, 
uh, you have what is called vibration vibro flotation it refers to the compaction of the soil using a vibro float in a horizontal motion from the vibrator inserted into the ground so uh, this is what uh, you have the motion in the horizontal direction and um, utilization of a top pile driving vibrator in a vertical mode is less efficient in fact this is a standard question that uh, people have like uh, uh, the can i just use a vibration in the vertical direction or why should i do it in the horizontal direction or can i see the vibration has uh, you know so for example there is what is called natural frequency in vibrations like if i bring the natural frequency of the machine and the, what the whatever is the operating system like you know vibrator to the natural frequency of the soil itself can there be any uh, advantage so these are all some questions people will have so what uh, people have seen is that you try to compact it in the horizontal uh, manner in the using the float like you know it's uh, in some sort of arrangement it's more efficient whereas utilization of uh, energy from top in the form of a vertical uh, 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 direction is not uh, that efficient the reason is simple that uh, see the thing is that the uh, we want to introduce lot of shear forces in soils like shear resistance in the soils would like to introduce so when you have a, a columns like this what happens is that the the column is a stronger material and even between the two columns you are making the material stronger that's an objective uh, uh, part of objective of the whole uh, issue here so by laterally compacting the possibility is that you would you would be compacting even the material that is in between uh, apart from trying to take control of the uh, stone column itself even the area that you are trying to do in the vertical manner because you have a good control there so the advantage as i said it's very clear that the um, vibration in the form of a horizontal uh, movement is much better then people have used this concept of uh, uh, frequency of the vibro float matching that of natural frequency of the in situ soil uh, but then there is a few companies uh, for example a miller resonant comp uh, compaction technique it's one technique people have been using actually what happens is that many of these uh, uh, techniques are you know evolved you know a, a, a particular contractor particular group of people evolve the technique and they perfect the technique so uh, some companies may be happy with the first one whereas uh, some uh, companies may be uh, happy with the few other ones like you know so essentially uh, the equipment the type of cranes the type of uh, movement the, uh, the all the process we have they uh, perfect the whole process over a period of time and uh, and also you know uh, that that becomes their trump card in their uh, in when, when they deal with clients so but then whatever is that the process in the objective uh, the the uh, the objective is the vibro compaction is to achieve the densification of the coarse grain soils and as i just mentioned if the silt and clay content is less then it's very effective and the effect of process is based on the fact that the particles of non coarse soil can be rearranged by vibration like particularly sands like you can see here uh, you have some before treatment you have all these particles and once you just vibrate it all the particles this gaps are there the voids you know they get uh, rearranged and there is so much settlement here in the field it can be as high as 1 meter 2 meters so uh, that's what you don't want so you'd like to uh, densify the system by in this uh, manner in the field and this is a typical example how it is done and we'll see more of that uh, in the video in a simple form it's a penetration then there is a vibration here compaction is being done in the horizontal direction then you also backfill the material say for example you can use the same sand or whatever material you have make it much more you know whatever so it can be done so the uh, vibro compaction is quite good for coarse grain soils with silt clay contents less than 10 to 15 percent and the effects are that it uh, results in increased shear strength means the strength of the ground will be higher so that the bearing capacity of the uh, whole area will be higher and uh, settlements increased stiffness is another thing the stiffness it becomes much more stiffer so if you are trying to have uh, uh, some uh, sensitive structures definitely you need very good stiffness and um, reduced liquefaction potential this is another important thing that you know uh, particularly when you are talking about uh, recurrence of earthquakes in the, in the 
particularly in India and many other places, you must be able to take care of the liquefaction potential as well. So, definitely the use of these techniques have been of uh, significant help in trying to achieve this goal. And where are the common applications? Of course, there are many like building foundations, chemical plants, storage tanks, silos, pipelines, wharf structures, embankments, roads, both land and offshore applications like if you want to do something in the uh, land or offshore, you have many applications here. So, the depth is in fact, they are able to achieve about 60 meters which is quite big like so uh, that is about uh, vibro compaction. What about vibro replacement? The vibro replacement is a technique of uh, constructing stone columns through the fill material and the weak soil to improve the load bearing capacity and settlement characteristics like you do not want to have uh, large settlements or you do not want uh, the load bearing capacity you would like to have the load bearing capacity improved. So, the advantage they are the difference is that here you have a lot of fine grained soils which do not densify effectively under vibrations hence it is necessary to form stone columns to reinforce and improve materials weak cohesive and mixed soils. <coughs> the principle of vibro replacement is that the stone columns and the intervening soil means the between the two stone columns the you have a soil it forms an integrated foundation support which has low compressibility like less settlements and also improved load bearing capacity. In cohesive soils excessive pore pressure is readily dissipated by the stone columns and for this reason reduced settlements occur at a faster rate than that is observed in the case of cohesive soils. <coughs> this is a very important point that uh, apart from increasing the uh, load carrying capacity of the uh, ground, they also have less settlements, the drainage is faster like you know say for example, in the case of uh, clays the consolidation is so slow the process is a time dependent process like it can take 5, 10 years or 6 years or you know. So, you do not want that you know if you want uh, to construct a building on a soft soil uh, you cannot wait for the consolidation to complete. So, you would like to accelerate the consolidation, complete the consolidation uh, say for example, it has to occur 1 meter, 2 meters, let it uh, happen faster so that you can construct the building that was a that is what we do here. <coughs> so, as I just mentioned this is the process uh, showing the vibrator replacement uh, and then these are the techniques and uh, here as opposed to just a densification in the case of uh, vibro compaction, uh, the, the principle is here it is reinforcing the soil like it is because it's a, you have a columnar inclusion and it helps in improving the bearing capacity. It is not by jet density alone, it is just the mechanism is very important and drainage is another one. So, it is applicable to mixed deposits of clay, silt and sand, soft and ultra soft silts, garbage fills, there are many things one can do. And the effects are that increased shear strength, increased stiffness, reduced liquefaction potential. Of course, these are also like you know, uh, people have been using uh, these techniques quite extensively in many places. In, uh, for example, in many of the East Coast projects, South, uh, I mean West Coast projects, there are too many, and it has been used in taxiways and runways, chemical plants, storage tanks, pipelines, bridge abutments, road and railway embankments. You know, if you want to connect uh, rural uh, areas by um, say for example, you would like to um, connect the rural road areas to mainstream, you have to construct a highway embankment. The highway embankment may pass through very, very soft soil where you cannot even walk. So, how do you do that? So, if you cannot, if you, if you cannot uh, improve it, then uh, there is no way that uh, those villagers can come into the mainstream, sell their uh, products and all that. So, what we do is that we should improve this uh, soil uh, between connecting the village and the town. So, for that, you need to use some of the uh, ground improvement techniques which are in this uh, form. And um, people have different terminologies here like people say that vibro composite they call it, in some places they call it uh, uh, vibro flotation. And uh, what is the size of the columns? Actually you know it could be 0.4 to 1 meter you know 
and then it is compact in point for this uh, you know it can be even 2 to 3 meters as well you know it is just uh, you know it all depends on uh, your uh, spacing and design actually it could be about 2 meters or 1 1 meter or you know whatever point for you have to design you know say properly say in a particular uh, area like you know the other day uh, there was one case where somebody was mentioning that uh, the soil is so soft in that uh, 40 percent of the uh, soil clay was replaced by stones stone column which is quite uh, a big number. So, it is very difficult to um, really you know uh, give a proper number here one should do a design and then see its performance. So, sometimes people do the casing as a driving and sometimes they do boring like uh, and then put the sands sometimes injections are given there are some motor columns are also there. So, there are many uh, like you know typically normal diameters will be 0 0.6 to 1 meter because uh, that is what we normally use and people can use crush, crushed rock of course, uh, crushed rock is also you may say that uh, it is all uh, stone material, but then the uh, possibility is that one can use any of the material that can be stronger than the clay. See the thing is that you will see that if you have a stronger material that takes load than the weaker material. So, they have a square pattern or a rectangular pattern or a triangular pattern or whatever normally they have a square pattern, triangular pattern and the spacing is about 1.5 to 3.5 diameter uh, meters. Uh, they provide strength uh, reinforcement I mean they are quite useful in settlement stability they act like vertical drains and then normally you provide a blanket of 0.3 meters and uh, uh, it acts as a drainage layer and also struct the st uh, structural stress distributing layer like you know you are trying you cannot put a directly on the uh, see uh, it is very difficult to put on a column. So, you have a, some sort of a stress distribution layer which is you will see that you know you have a stone columns here a couple of stone columns you have a sand uh, cushion which can take care of that load. So, the column should extend to a firmer soil behavior to the extent possible because of the relatively high modulus of the soil as I just mentioned the uh, stones have high modulus like you know stress strain curve if you just plot for the sand for the stone for the clay definitely stone will have a very good stiffness like the if you plot the stress and curve the tangent is nothing but the modulus. So, what happens because of this is that large port of the uh, large portion of the vertical load applied to the ground surface is transferred to the columns. So, that is the reason like you know you have a loading platform which is of a sandy layer or whatever then you have stone columns the moment you apply the load the load distribution takes place to the sand layer and after that it gets transferred to the columns and uh, they are somewhat similar, but then you know you do not need to have say the pile caps structural connections like you know in the case of uh, pile design you need to go for much more rigorous uh, calculations and uh, of course, they are very very costly there is no doubt about it here it is much simpler like you know people have been using uh, many materials which are stiffer compared to the native soil that is the principle here. So, here I would like to show some uh, slides or uh, sorry some videos which can be quite uh, uh, useful in trying to capture what I want to say. There are two videos one in vibro compaction and the other one is in vibro replacement and this is uh, Uh, this is given by you know the Keller company which is a ground improvement company. Uh, you can see that uh, they have the steps of uh, uh, various steps that are involved in the ground improvement uh, operations. In fact, uh, there are uh, Dr. Venu Raju and Dr. Sri Harikrishna who was who were able to give this material for demonstration and uh, for presentation this NPTEL program. You can see that they are doing this uh, particular process here whatever I just showed. Penetration with water jetting. You can see jets. They have extension tubes.
you can see that coupling it can air water supply so they have an eccentric weight they have a nose cone then you have you are trying to backfill in the same place the sand you can see that it's a uh, compacting so some of these companies they have automatic uh, real time systems in which um, you know you can see how much of sand has gone in or stone has gone in and they have uh, immediately the cone penetration test immediately they are doing you can see that real time monitoring of ground resistance actually so they are trying to see what is the resistance it has like you can see that uh, this is the old one and the new one it little improved at the bottom portion you can see that it was improved so like this one can uh, complete this uh, particular in a series of li lifts uh, right from top 1 meter to like you can come from top and then there are many applications of this particular technique right from other things and uh, the other one was about stone columns it's a rigorous job extension tube you can see that sir tubing actually air supply inside air supply stone feeder pipe because of the eccentric weight that it has it introduces the vibrations actually aggregate stone is being fed into the stone bucket like this has come from top and then you are trying to lower it then penetration using vibrations and pull down thrust vibrator starts compacting and forming the stone columns at the bottom particularly and um, they are all looked at in real time they will be able to see what is the fill what is the depth of uh, stone columns now you can see here like they are looking at uh, you know 
the bottoms. So once you complete, the, say at the top level, you can see that the compaction, you know, completion of the vibrosity, then you compact it again. See that. So they are measuring what is the diameter because you need it for quality control. It has come very well. And of course, applications are too many here, like highways, bridge approaches, high speed railway embankment, storage tanks, and airport infrastructure. Too many. So, you have seen that, I mean, how vibro compaction and uh, vibro uh, replacement, that is the construction of stone, stone columns is done. Uh, both have been very effective in uh, many of the ground improvement projects. And uh, what are the factors that influence the stone column behavior? People have studied, in fact, uh, there are a lot of uh, material available. Uh, the number one is, uh, undrained shear strength of the soil like say so for example if the soil is very poor you have to definitely it needs some sort of improvement you know because uh, that's one thing so what is the strength of the soil is it 10 kpa 5 kpa there are some soils which they call it ultra ultra soft right? they're just like water so is it uh, okay in that particular uh, environment so so undrained shear strength of the soil is one thing then in situ lateral stress of the soil so for example if the soil is little uh, uh, stiffer then the uh, how much of confinement it can give uh, say for example the moment you put the uh, stones inside there is a tendency for the uh, stone to go in this form so to what extent there is a lateral resistance because the lateral resistance should be good if the lateral resistance is higher the performance of the stone column is better so that is one point then stress strain characteristics of the soil say for example the whether it is a soft soil characteristics how is that is it a work consolidated soil a normally consolidated soil how it can uh, influence that's one important variable then initial column dimensions of course um, this is this comes by design then friction angle and stress strain characteristics of the column material itself like say for example soil the soft soil is very poor it has a you can construct a sustained curve uh, which is a small uh, you know it has a uh, you know you start from a 0 percent uh, level and then goes to maybe 20 percent strain level or 10 percent strain level then you also need to have stress strain characters of the friction angle uh, 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 which will give you the uh, c and phi and all other parameters for both materials essentially here the soil we call it uh, in terms of the cohesion because uh, we say that the um, uh, there is only a cohesion say for example 10 kpa 20 kpa whereas stone column material we say that it has got friction angle say for example 30 degrees and uh, so all these factors will influence the response of the stone column behavior what does it mean response means i would like to have improved bearing capacity i would like to have less settlements so if you want to have good bearing capacity i must be able to have all these factors into my uh, consideration I must be able to use some of them in design. So that is what I mean. So uh, like the what is the typical value for the uh, stone column? What is the uh, what is the load it can take? So normally uh, engineers have a tendency to what is the single pile capacity? What is the single stone column capacity? So one should have a rough idea. We will see how it can be calculated as well now. And um, actually a conservative approach is treating stone columns like piles. You know that is one thing whereas in a rational approach loads are distributed between the soil and stone columns as a ratio like you have in a you have a stone column here you have a stone column here and what happens is that the uh, you apply a load actually this we call it a, a unit cell and uh, the actually this is so the thing is that the moment you have a, a load the load is taken care of by this uh, stone material you know as I just mentioned. Uh, the stones start taking load and this uh, load that, that is coming on the clay is less. N previously, uh, 
the there was uh, some load was you know actually there was nothing uh, there was some wor whatever is the stress a uh, clay was taking but now whatever load you are trying to apply it is now being shared by a uh, stone column and the clay present but then this being a better material this uh, this will take more and then we call it uh, what is called stress concentration factor which is actually the ratio of vertical stress in the stone column and the vertical stress in the soft soil like we have a term for this which is a ratio of uh, stress in the stone column and the ratio of the stress in the clay and it varies from 2 to 6 and usually 3 to 4 are the numbers. So, in fact, uh, you know from fundamentals one can construct a simple equation like area of the soil, area of the uh, stone columns plus area of the soil uh, that is a clay into the total stress applied equal to it can divide like this. Then the area replacement ratio you can define like this how much of area in that uh, you are replacing by uh, stones like area ratio is what the way sometimes that it is defined like this. So, here you can see that like as I said total area divided by area of stones like it can be you know uh, it is another uh, way you know people have uh, say in fact if uh, the this is one expression that people have as uh, so the, the load that can be distributed by uh, in this manner for the column as well as the clay are given in this form where uh, one can say that the n is that uh, factor i just explained in the previous uh, slide uh, this is the load taken care by the clay this is the load taken care by the stone column and um, there is also a term called uh, a settlement ratio we assume that it is one uh, we use uh, a term called beta which will tell you the um, settlement reduction ratio because we would like to see that the settlement is minimum you know. So, for example, if I say that you are constructing a tank you know I say that the settlement has to be only 25 mm or 40 mm or 50 mm something like that. So, whereas in the conventional case settlement will be about a meter I do not want that. So, that settlement ratio one can express in this uh, form which is again a function of the area ratio and also the stress concentration factor and we assume that the clay and columns settle equal amount. So, the moment you apply the load the both settle like you know you have a clay here you have a sand, uh, stone column here the, the moment you because you have a, a loading platform at the top they apply a load they settle equally, but in the process the uh, stone takes more load compared to clay. Uh, for example, I just want to give a small uh, calculations example here ultimate bearing capacity of the stone column is given by a simple expression it should be uh, pi C u here pi by 2 C u and then sigma r. So, C u is under shear strength of the clay uh, sigma r the effective radial stress as measured by the pressure meter in fact, I just mentioned that uh, uh, like you know many of the tests we use you know like pressure meter you know like uh, that is one of the tech uh, the methods to see the condition of the improved ground uh, we have both CPT test SPT test you have pressure meter also the advantage of the pressure meter is that there is a radial expansion of the uh, uh, this uh, diaphragm and uh, that you will get radial stress from that directly you can measure. So, that is roughly equal to sometimes if uh, the, uh, the bearing capacity or the uh, shear strength is C u it is twice. So, phi is effective frictional angle of the material. So, for example, I am trying to work out a simple example if uh, the under shear strength of the soil is 20 kPa in fact, this 20 kPa. So, for example, you are going to Mangalore area it can be 10 kPa 20 kPa like that and then you have the stone material which has a friction angle of 40. So, one can use an expression like this and then get the ultimate uh, load that uh, the stone column can take because this is a formula here. So, you will get uh, about uh, 51.1 uh, kPa you can see that the from 20 kPa it got increased to 50 you know 55 with the presence of using the stone. So, ultimate load on one diameter stone column you can uh, column you can just calculate in this manner. So, you can see that one can uh, the load you will get a 433 uh, or uh, you know some load which is reasonable number. So, one can calculate the uh, diam the capacity of the stone column provided uh, 
you know the properties of the soft soil, properties of the stone material. So, based on that one can get this and then normally some empirical relations are there sometimes if C u is uh, under shear strength of the, the, of the stone column by this process you can at least increase that by 25 times with a suitable factor of 20, uh, for safety like 2.5 or something like that. So, uh, the, of course, this needs to be ca uh, treated with caution because uh, people have to do a lot of uh, rigorous exercises here. And uh, as I just mentioned, uh, there are two patterns, one is a square pattern or even a triangular pattern. Uh, so, for equivalent diameter for a uh, e we call it equivalent diameter. Uh, for a triangular pattern it is 1.05 times s, s is the spacing of the uh, stone columns. For square it is d equivalent diameter is 1.13 s. This is what I was just mentioning and uh, see this is the stone column which is uh, a st completely stone and then you know this is the load by the column like you can see it is a higher number. Uh, whereas this is a load in the clay and this is an average number. Okay. You can see that this is sigma c a lower value whereas, sigma s is a higher value and then you get an average number. So, this is what I just meant by uh, the load sharing mechanism of the materials like because somewhat the soil is somewhat soft it cannot take load this will take that is it uh, that is the meaning. And uh, see once you try to construct this uh, stone columns. Uh, we have to see under what conditions they fail like you introduce a technique you should be careful about uh, the fact that that should not fail. So, you are trying to now introduce stone columns you should see under what conditions it can fail. So, one classical example is that you have a long stone column introduced and the with a foam or a floating uh, whatever it can be ending at the uh, you know this can be a form strata or it can be uh, there is no material here itself. So, the possibility is that there could be a bulge, bulge like this okay. and uh, normally this is restricted to 2.223 times d. Okay. This is one type of failure that one can uh, have you know in the stone columns and of course, it is not a failure it is just uh, that you know what is happening. Uh, the lateral resistance of the uh, soil here is less that is what I meant you know just now in the previous slides I said that the lateral resistance of the soil should be good. In fact, uh, people have done lot of research uh, to eliminate this and they call what is called they call it you know they are putting some uh, geocell material or a geocentric material to avoid this type of bulging failure we call it bulging of the stone column if it does not bulge it is good for you is it not you are trying to apply the load load is transferred completely by this taken care of by this, but if it bulges there is a possibility that it is not very effective. So, you would like to avoid it. So, some people have done you know you just uh, you know uh, in your um, uh, construction process put a sort of a casing made of a geocell or some sort of material and uh, see that the it is completely there and uh, you know you this sort of failure is avoided. Then suppose the material is uh, what is called sha the you know depth is less there is a possibility that it could fail like this which is a simple uh, classical soil mechanics type of failure which is called a shear failure. Uh, so, that also we do not want the third one is you know there could be a, a side friction and the end bearing this type of possibility is also there. So, essentially we should see that the these failure mechanisms are understood in a proper perspective and the columns will not have this problems. So, there is another expression that I have for ultimate bearing capacity the group of piles you know say when I have a group of piles or the granular piles we call it actually we d we call it granular pile not an RCC pile the uh, Q ultimate is given in terms of the lateral stress into tan square beta plus 2 C, C is average value tan phi B and uh, actually I just mentioned that the lateral stress uh, sigma 3 will uh, give you that uh, influence. So, that is that is coming here uh, in terms of the gamma c b into tan beta by 2 plus 2 c and then beta the where uh, this is a uh, beta is nothing but 45 plus uh, phi average by 2 and c average you know uh, these are all some simple expressions actually what we are trying to calculate is that 
we are trying to calculate you know soil is uh, has some cohesion sand has some friction so since two materials are present you are trying to calculate average values of cohesion for improved ground which is quite useful like it is we call it c average and then fr friction average and then this is the saturated weight of the soil clay for example if you take it as 20 km per meter cube and uh, you have you know i'm just trying to illustrate with another example because what you saw just now was the capacity of a single column now how the group also behaves one should understand and um, say so this is what i meant like you have a single column we know a little bit but you know this is like uh, you assume that there is a load uh, you know this particular uh, you know you have a b is the width of the uh, foundation and uh, say this is the say for example some tank or square building and uh, you are trying to Im calculate the uh, all the parameters like lateral stresses and all that and um, this is a whatever i just uh, I, I we are trying to calculate the same thing here using these parameters and um, this approach is good for uh, cohesion values of cohesion more than uh, 30 kpa and uh, use some of these properties like c equal to 30 kpa phi is equal to 40 degrees uh, the uh, a s is 0.5 and uh, poisson so some you know this is actually friction and uh, some of these factors if you just calculate you can just see that the ultimate bearing capacity is about 254 you know i use a 30 kpa material now i just increase it to 254 you can see that about five times i can increase the capacity of the uh, load like you know this is uh, actually you know um, 5.14 cu is what is called the ultimate bearing capacity of clay 5.14 into 30 is about 150 so i just so if you know the cu of the uh, soil 5.14 into cu we, we call it as ultimate bearing capacity now we have increased it to 254 it's about a good about twice close to 2 okay these are all some more experimental results that we have on uh, you know how the depending on the friction angle of the soil the stone column um, what happens so a lot of research is done like you know say for example as i said without uh, the, the what is that this is a uh, load divided by its uh, shear strength you know i just gave an expression that the ultimate load divided is equal to 5.14 cu just mentioned that so you can see here that without stone columns you have that number 5. Point, uh, somewhere here this is a standard equation we have in uh, basic uh, bearing capacity equations now what i am trying to do is that i am trying to put some uh, reinforcement uh, stone stone column material here and people have different uh, re researchers have ha have given different types of uh, equations and they observed also in the field like you know somebody from bell uh, like uh, hughes hughes and uh, there are so many so you can see that depending on the friction angle and whatever is material available uh, there's some more uh, literature from literature is all taken you can see that significantly that ratio instead of 5.14 it, it can be as high as 15 and it is a function of the you know actually friction angle has to be at least 25 degrees of the sand and if you increase the friction angle you have an excellent effect like 45 degrees you have some 15 to 35 you know that ratio increases so very so the thing is you have a good sandy material or you know sand can, sand can be used as a you know we call it as sand columns like you know if the clay is not i mean if the stone is expensive use sand and if you have a friction angle of 25 degrees then definitely from 5 you are increasing it to 15 or whatever 10 at least so you can see that it is a very good improvement whereas if you have a very good material definitely like you know you can use say for example a construction debris you can use you know particularly if you are trying to talk about sustainable uh, development uh, you know aggregates uh, of course stones are quite expensive in uh, uh, you know so some things could be done so this is about uh, settle another one where you know um, depending on the friction angle of the soil how this uh, distribution load distribution is altered this is another interesting uh, thing from the field you know like you know because as i said ground improvement techniques are done in the field it's not in the lab 
and people make lot of assumptions in doing the design and uh, it is very risky they would like to verify to what extent they are correct. They try to check back their concepts and try to come out with lot of uh, analysis and this is one type of analysis. So, for example, this is the area of the A, A by A s you know um, area total area divided by the area of the stone column. Okay. So, so you, you can see this uh, 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 plot where if uh, the and then this is settlement ratio. Okay. So, the um, you can see that as the um, settlement ratio means settlement improvement actually if the uh, sandy material is very high what happens if you have lot of sand definitely the settlement reduction is very high. You do not want you know in a particularly in a sandy materials and all that are in a stony material settlements are going to be uh, less this is what is called infinite grid patterns or whatever. So, settlement ratio is going to be very less, but whereas you have lesser sand or lesser stone material the there is a marginal improvement that is it. So, you can see that they have done for different materials like you know say for example, green wood for area of uh, st uh, stone column as 1 meter square like 1 into 1, 1 meter or little close to that and um, uh, Cu value means which is called under shear strength value 4 and 2 and uh, so he got some equation which is uh, like uh, here you know 1 b this is uh, 1 b 1. So, 1 a is here. So, then there is another way of uh, you know people are looking at uh, you know these are all measured okay, like comparison of elastic theories and field observations. People have made uh, some of these theories you know actually there are different theories uh, based on you know the observations say for example, whatever I have just said phi and all that they are all limit equilibrium methods like if I know the phi of the um, uh, sand or the stone column. Uh, we use uh, you know we are trying to say that you are putting the sand material inside and then uh, when you are applying the load uh, there is a bulging type of thing and there is a resistance offered by the uh, surrounding soil. So, based on this concepts which is called limit equilibrium concepts we have derived that equation actually that uh, whatever equation that we had to calculate the uh, uh, bearing capacity improvement for a single stone column and uh, multiple uh, columns this is based on some limit equilibrium methods and we also uh, have elastic theory approaches uh, like particularly by uh, Pribe and others that I will show you yeah, here the Pribe is there. So, you can see in this uh, particular uh, figure that uh, for the field observations essentially we are not interested in uh, simple analysis we would like to see how the theory works in the field. So, you can see here that the uh, the theory that uh, the uh, Greenwood had which is a essentially a cavity expansion theory based approach he has C u equal to force uh, n uh, per centimeter square and this is two values you can see one one curve here the other one is here somewhere. So, which means reasonably good then weighted modulus m like you know the actually the settlement is uh, essentially a function of the stiffness, stiffness of the materials if the stone is uh, very stiff compared to clay it is 10 times here. So, you can see that 2 a is here 2 a material you can just see that it is very good. So, if E s by E c is 5 times it is somewhat lower here you can see that it is expected. So, like that somebody has also done in terms of other things Pribe is another one like I will explain that method in uh, again in detail like for 37.5 degrees it is somewhere here this is again a theoretical method. Uh, somebody has again done some more calculations all those things are here. What I want to say is that it is a very interesting that you have theories and these are also measured values. So, which means that you have to have some theory to calculate you also should have measurements to uh, do the analysis to confirm the analysis and also to make sure that you have to give a guarantee to the actual uh, persons who are the owners. So, for example, uh, you have uh, trying to improve the soft soil uh, properties in Kerala I have to give a uh, guarantee to the Kerala government or the port trust authorities that yes the stone column is working and uh, it has taken so much of load uh, you know you had uh, so much load from your uh, containment uh, uh, 
uh, facilities and now this is a load that uh, the stone column is taking and uh, the performance is going to be very good because uh, it is tallying with all the field observations. So that is how I would like to justify my design. So this is another interesting point where uh, you can see that the uh, depending on the stone column spacing, uh, spacing ratio of the treated to untreated uh, soils like you know. Uh, so, you can see that depending on the stone column spacing what is the uh, effect of settlement, settlement of treated and untreated ground ratio. Again here you see that if the, uh, the, the this, this ratio has to be the settlement it should be low you know because settlement in the case of treated material you expect low value say for example instead of uh, you may expect 25 mm only instead of 100 mm. So, it came it is 25 percent. So, that 25 percent is here and uh, if the, un, the uh, you can see here that the reduction is good in the case of uh, you know there are two materials here there are, it is actually a function of the under shear strength of the soil ok. So, in the case of somewhat stiffer soils it has been uh, there is a good reduction stiffer in the sense it is not very stiff again you know it is good for stone column uh, applications that is what I meant. See the uh, it has been quite effective here and uh, here say for example, uh, in the case of if the uh, uh, spacing is 2 meters and uh, the settlement of the treated ground to untreated that ratio is actually more in the case of uh, 20 kilometer per meter square you know in the sense it is about 55 to 60 percent whereas it is up 10 percent here. Actually this material is already stiff you know 20, 40 kilometer per meter square here the material is already stiff and uh, definitely there is a good improvement but the you know there is a small. So, here in this case it is about 55 you know I mean not 25 to about 45 percent. So, you can see that is for the spacing. So, you can really come out with uh, uh, some understanding of some of these things actually these are all done in a uh, lot of field studies and uh, actually this is another classical application in highways uh, say for example, this is a highway embankment you would like to construct the uh, highway on that say for example, you are from uh, uh, some so, uh, post soft soil areas whether it is uh, Paradeep or whether it is uh, Kandla or whether it is uh, Mangalore or Calcutta where you have a lot of soil, soft soils. You construct a highway embankment maybe about 5 meters and the classical thing is that the uh, slip circle analysis should be done and if the slip circle analysis shows that the factor of safety is less than 1. So, you cannot uh, really have any use of that. So, what you do is that you construct the stone columns like this in this form and then you calculate the uh, you know you can calculate the C and the phi. Earlier uh, yeah, it is only C you know C of the soil and all that. So, the thing is that you have you, you, you take the improved uh, properties of the material like you know from this um, you can calculate equivalent cohesion and equivalent friction of the stone uh, of the material in which stone columns are present and then use it in stability analysis and you can get a factor of safety of 1.3 or 1.4. Earlier the factor of safety was less than 1 it is not acceptable now with the use of the stone column uh, you can improve the stability of the uh, slopes uh, or the highway embankments in a comfortable manner. Uh, that is very important application in uh, many of the uh, of the stone columns and uh, actually this is some of the um, you know normally in India we try to follow the IS codes. I would like to highlight uh, the failure mechanisms that uh, we just discussed earlier they are again reaffirmed in IS code that we have this bulging formation at uh, 2 to 3 4 D and um, the short column uh, is also like failure is also another possibility like you know what happens is that this is one uh, type of failure that one ca one can expect. Uh, so, that one should avoid uh, you know the fact is that you are trying to have that loading uh, platform you know in this see the soil is so soft here and then uh, but you have that loading platform then this type of which is again a sandy soil and then you have a stone column here this problem will not be there as simple as that. Then um, this sort of you know the uh, the uh, having side friction 
you know actually sometimes it's it, it depends on the type of construction or the method that we use actually so if you are using uh, uh, you know uh, some uh, boring methods and all that the possibility is that uh, you know there is not much effective there are gaps or some sort of thing so the side uh, friction may be very less so it will not be effective actually the objective is that it tries to expand laterally and then there is a lateral force in the opposite direction when you have vertical uh, force and then there is a lateral uh, um, resistance then it works but suppose there is a slip in between like you know like there are some gaps and all that and all that there is a, it will not be very effective so we don't want this possibility also like you know so essentially we need to understand the failure mechanisms and uh, uh, have in a uh, so that they are not occurring in the uh, your uh, in the construction actually uh, in the case of non homogeneous layer which means that you have some more soft soil somewhere present. So, what it means is that you have a soft soil here and then uh, reasonably uh, better material the failure plane is only here it is not deeper. Again you have a soft soil here the failure plane is only here. So, this is what so one should know that uh, where it can fail you know so that see the thing is why you are trying to do all these things is in a soil investigation you should do a proper soil investigation and try to identify where are the weaker areas where are the stronger areas because soil is not uniform. So, everywhere along uh, uh, you know uh, the total area you must be able to find out exactly uh, you know um, you may say for example, in this area if this happens the load carrying capacity will come down ok. So, possibly you know uh, uh, the, some of these things you know one should be careful say for example, the your uh, so this is also another problem. So, one should see that the local bulging in some cases like this you know are possibilities and one should understand that it is uh, one should avoid this ok. So, this is another type where we can expect say depending on the loading say for example, you have a distributed load you have a just a load uh, uh, working on the column itself this is one type of failure it starts uh, from here so a little bit like there is a little bit of settlement and then it just starts like this here like this. So, there are a number of uh, issues that one needs to understand and um, what you should do is that one should do load test there is a, a one alternative that uh, that is the only way and uh, maybe I will discuss that in the next class.